Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless spain recognizes palestinian statehood spanish prime minister says recognition only way to peace and security palestine state that coexists alongside the state of israel in peace and security Madrid Conference of 1991, which paved the way for the Oslo Peace Accords. And now again, Spain is at the vanguard of Middle East peace efforts. The recognition of uh, the state of Palestine is not only a matter of historical justice with the legitimate aspirations of the Palestine people, but it is also an imperative need to achieve peace. It is uh, the only way to realize the solution that we all recognize as the only possible one to achieve a future of peace, that of a Palestine state that coexists alongside the state of Israel in peace and security. The state of Palestine must be viable with the West Bank and Gaza connected by a corridor and with East Jerusalem as its capital and must be unified under the legitimate government of the Palestine National Authority. The recognition of Palestinian statehood is the climax of months of intense diplomacy, made desperately urgent by the reality in Gaza. Sanchez rejected Israeli criticism. This recognition is not against any particular state or people, he said. Its only purpose is to achieve peace. Palestine state that coexists alongside the state of Israel in peace and security. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9:26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. 1 Thessalonians 5:3. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. So how does peace and security lead to sudden destruction? And what is the sudden destruction? Is it the rapture of the church? Is it the revealing of the Antichrist? Is it war? While we can conjecture what the sudden destruction is, the Apostle Paul tells us Christians are not part of it. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. In these verses of scripture, the Apostle Paul is undoubtedly talking about the rapture of the church. The Apostle Paul continues in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, For when they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Apostle Paul makes a distinction between we and they. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, We who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, along with the dead in Christ and thus we shall always be with the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 5.3, Paul says, While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. The sudden destruction that comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape, could very well be when the rapture occurs. The sudden destruction comes upon them while they are saying peace and security. Sudden destruction comes, and this is where the distinction the Apostle Paul makes comes into play. They will not escape. That would seemingly indicate that we escape as we read in Luke 21, 36. 
Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Sudden is the Greek word epnidios, which means unexpected, suddenly. Destruction is the Greek word alethros, which means ruin, i.e. death, punishment. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 could be translated like this. For when they say peace and security, then unexpected and sudden punishment comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Could it be that this sudden destruction is the rapture of the church? 1 Corinthians 15.52 tells us that the rapture will happen suddenly in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15.50-54 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Twinkling is the Greek word repay, which means a jerk of the eye. By analogy, an instant, i.e. suddenly. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church? We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know him, and the sooner the better. Welcome to our special coverage here on Al Jazeera, where as of Tuesday, May the 28th, Norway, Ireland, and Spain have all formally recognized Palestine as a state. It's a historic move reflecting the growing calls for a peaceful resolution to a 76-year conflict and an end to Israel's occupation. It also reasserts the Palestinian people's right to self-determination. Now, more than seven months into Israel's devastating war on Gaza, the chorus of voices denouncing the violence and impunity is growing louder. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is increasingly isolated. He's facing various legal challenges before two of the world's top courts with accusations of genocide and war crimes. Norway, Spain and Ireland are in good company. Most of the world supports Palestinian statehood. More than 140 of the 193 members of the UN General Assembly recognize it. The momentum, too, is building. Slovenia and Malta have also said that they're considering formal recognition and more countries could also follow suit. Prime Minister Sanchez also spoke about the next steps that Spain will now take going forward. I would like to underline that starting tomorrow, we will focus all our efforts to implement the two-state solution and make it a reality. We will work on three main priorities. First, we must urgently put an end to the ongoing unprecedented crisis in Gaza. I call once again for a permanent ceasefire, for the entry of humanitarian aid, and for the immediate release of all the Israeli hostages held by Hamas. 
Secondly, we will support the Palestine National Authority in the reform process initiated by its new government. The Palestine Authority is our partner for peace, and it will need all of our support. And finally, we will continue to foster cooperation with our Arab partners who are working and uh, committed towards peace and prosperity in the region. We will continue working with them with the aim of convening an international peace conference to implement the two-state solution. All the latest there. Paul, a real statement this morning from, from Prime Minister Sanchez. Indeed. Uh, highly symbolic, momentous, frankly. Uh, he gave the statement in the Palace of Montclair, which is behind me. What he had to say inside uh, really will uh, you know, have significance all around the world. Y you've already played some of the two, I think, most uh, momentous parts of his speech. But there were other parts as well that I would highlight. Uh, for example, where he said that all our resolutions, all the Spanish resolutions, Spain, Norway and Ireland, are in line with existing UN resolutions as adopted by European Union member states. And that I think it's very important to emphasize that this isn't Spain, Ireland and Norway going it alone somehow in some kind of maverick way. All of the statement, the recognition of Palestine as a state is, is totally in line uh, with the membership of the UN and the membership of the uh, European Union. The other thing that I've been detecting while I've been here in Madrid is, is a sense that the idea that the United States as the kind of leader of this, uh, of negotiations with Israel, is, uh, is, is starting to wane. I think the Palestinians clearly have been uh, doing their diplomatic homework with the Europeans in particular. Um, you think of back to the 2020 Abraham Accords, the normalization of relations between Israel and the Arab states uh, caused alarm for the Palestinians. And as a result, they've been d talking uh, in a very concerted way with Europeans to, to garner support there, fearing that the United States are, are not going to take the Palestinian cause seriously. Well, this is the product of those kinds of diplomatic efforts uh, by the Palestinians. And if I can say just finally, you know, to reiterate what he said, this recognition by Spain, Ireland and Norway is uh, not just a, a historical justice, as he described it, but necessary, he believes, uh, for peace. Spain can be a leader so that Europe can have its own politics rather than simply following the United States because America is no longer a real mediator. It's actually part of the conflict and so Europe can lead with different ideas. The challenge now is to persuade more European nations to follow their example. Slovenia and Malta have expressed their willingness. The pressure now is growing on Germany and France and the UK. Of course, the United States has long assumed leadership of Middle East peace initiatives, but Spain's declaration is evidence of a growing sentiment among even Western nations that the U.S. policy is failing to bring a two-state solution any closer. The most prophetic event to happen in the 20th century was the regathering of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland in the Middle East, resulting in the creation of the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948. The second most prophetic event was the formation of the European Union. Both of these prophetic events point to the fact that we are living in the end times, right on the threshold of the tribulation and the Lord's return. The book of Daniel tells us a unified Europe will rise in the end times out of the ashes of the old Roman Empire. The book of Daniel also tells us the Antichrist arises from this end times revived Roman Empire. The book of Daniel chapters 2 and 7 is where a unified European sign is revealed. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 is where we learn where the Antichrist arises from. And after the 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The people spoken of are the Romans who destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The prince who is to come is the Antichrist. Since we know the people who destroyed the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary, the second temple, are the Romans, and the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, is of the Roman people, we know that the Antichrist comes from and will head the last Gentile empire in world history, a revived Roman empire. The prophecies given to Daniel in these chapters relate to the latter days as we read in Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Daniel's prophecies are based upon a dream which God gave to King Nebuchadnezzar. 
Interpreting that dream, Daniel concluded that it revealed a succession of Gentile empires, beginning with the Babylonian Empire, followed by Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and a revived Roman Empire. The last Gentile world empire will be a confederation of nations that will arise out of the old Roman Empire. And out of that confederation, the Antichrist will arise, using the revived Roman Empire as his base to conquer the world. But this final Gentile empire will be short-lived, for it will be suddenly crushed by the return of the Messiah, who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It seems as though we are witnessing the fulfillment of these ancient prophecies of Daniel right before our very eyes. As Europe grows in strength, it will most likely be divided into ten administrative areas, just as Daniel prophesied. As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance. The Prince who is to come. The Beast. The Son of Perdition. The Worthless Shepherd. The Man of Sin. The Lawless One. The First Seal Judgment in the Book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2 Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. Daniel 8.25 through his cunning, he shall cause the seat to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. Revelation 13.5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. The Antichrist will have a fierce countenance. Daniel 8.23 And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. He will be extremely proud. Daniel 11.36-37 and 37. Then the king shall do according to his own will, he shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. The Antichrist will not desire women. Daniel 11.37 He shall regard neither the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall exalt himself above them all. He will be a military genius. Revelation 13.4 So they worshipped the dragon, who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. Revelation 13.14 And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth, to make an image to the beast, who is wounded by the sword and lived. Zechariah 11.17 Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall be completely withered, and his right eye shall be totally blinded. The Antichrist will be indwelt by Satan. Daniel 8.24 His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully, and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty, and also the holy people. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. Daniel 9.26 And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, 
but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The Antichrist will control a one world monetary system known as the Mark of the Beast. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. He will control a one world religion. Revelation 13, 11, and 12. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The Antichrist will control a one world government. Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Our world is preparing for a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world monetary system. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Over the years, there has been much speculation as to who the Antichrist is. While the Bible gives many characteristics and clues about the Antichrist, I believe Christians will not know who he is until after the rapture. It is likely that when the Antichrist is revealed, we all will be very surprised at his identity. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You 
you may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.